hello, young ladies, future scientists and inventors and creators of the world that doesn't yet exist. My name is Amy Sterling, and I'm the director of iWire, which is a puzzle game that maps the brain. We're based out of Sebastian Sung's neuroscience lab at Princeton University and invite people from all over the world, from all walks of life, to solve 3D puzzles. And as they solve the puzzles, they are mapping out circuits of neurons. Our lab is focused on connectomics, which is mapping out circuits of neurons and then pairing those maps or those new charts of what cells are connected to what other cells with electrophysiological data. So uh, information about what neurons are firing when and in response to what stimuli so that we can start to decipher how the connections among neurons actually result in the functionality of those cells. So how the brain actually does what it does. I've been working in connectomics since 2012, so for eight years now. When I started, it used to take about a thousand hours of expert human time to map one neuron. Then we got it down to hundreds of hours and tens of hours using machine learning and artificial intelligence. Now it's gotten down to just a couple of hours and sometimes even less than one hour of an expert human working to correct uh, automated reconstructions that were generated by an AI. So this field is an example of pretty much every field within neuroscience or every field within science and most fields that exist at all, which is that technology is completely revolutionizing them. The way that things were done in the past seems like moving at a snail's pace compared to today. And that should make me really excited about the future. It definitely makes me pretty stoked about the future because when I think about how far it's come in eight years, like where are we going to be eight years farther down the line? You know, right now, the state of the art endeavors, which we are a part of, are seeking to reconstruct about 100,000 neurons from a cubic millimeter of mouse cortex, which is a huge data set and just a few years ago would have been absolutely impossible. But yet a whole human brain has around 86 billion neurons. So we need to have orders of magnitude of improvement in order to really start tackling larger populations of neurons and importantly, then to be able to actually ask more human level questions. You know, The things that make me excited about the field of neuroscience and kind of enthuse my day-to-day -day life are are things that are farther down the line, right? Like what is creativity? What's curiosity? You know, what's going on in your brain when you're feeling really dedicated and motivated to do something versus when you're like, oh, I can barely be bothered to even finish this even though I have to. There are so many different psychological states that all of course have neural correlates and very few of those do we actually know what's going on differently in the brains of functioning human beings that are out in the world doing their regular day-to-day -day things. The field of neuroscience has tremendous opportunity and you are at a point in time when we're seeing a renaissance in the study and discovery of facts about our own brain. You know, and the brain at the end of the day is what makes us who we are. It's what creates the human experience and allows us to interpret the world around us and interact with those who we learn to love. It's amazing that this little bundle of 86 billion neurons and some hundreds of trillions of synapses is what makes a thinking, feeling a human being. And the fact that you're going to be getting to live your lives in the time where we're probably going to have thousands, millions, I don't know, of answers to questions that have really risen on the minds of humans ever since we've been able to call ourselves humans is an awesome opportunity. And I think it should be really compelling and motivating, even if you don't want to go into neuroscience. Just keeping up with what's going on in the field, I hope will be enlightening and invigorating to you and lots of others. So this week, we are really excited to add a special neuron into iWire. It's called the Bright Neuron. So let me show you how to access it and how to play on this neuron. And uh, if you are able to complete this whole neuron uh, within the course of this week, then you'll get to name it. And when you hit start playing, it will train you how to play. In a nutshell, what you're trying to do is map one branch of one neuron from one side of the cube to the other and you're sort of coloring inside the lines. So as you scroll through these 2D images, it scrolls through a plane, a 2D plane from a stack of 265 images. And so when you color in 2D, it corresponds to 
a 3D pixel called a voxel that is found within a larger super voxel an agglomeration of lots of little 3D pixels that creates a 3D segment. So when you click, it adds a 3D segment. And what you're trying to do is add multiple 3D segments or sometimes just one. And those segments are all generated by the AI in order to continue the branch of that neuron. Now, the neurons often start off looking like a snapped off tree branch. They may have a jagged edge or a flat, sharp edge. Those are telltale signs that the AI has made a mistake and we need the insightful human minds to come in uh, and chart where this neuron branch goes because the AI was not able to do it automatically. So if you go in, you'll learn how to play. You can play on the bright neuron. If you finish that neuron this week, you'll get to name it. And if you have any questions, you can shoot me a tweet. My Twitter's Amy Neurons, or feel free to send me an email through your program. I'll be online on iWire periodically, and then I'll be present on Friday at your closing ceremony. And I'm so excited to meet you ladies and hear about what you've learned about the brain this week. Thank you so much for your time. And I hope you have a blast this week learning about the wonderful, amazing, strange, bizarre, but super awesome human brain.